overtime. In this episode of Overtime Arcade, we're going to pick up four more arcade machines. <laughs> but don't worry, I know I know what you're saying, they're not for me. I don't need any more projects. I got a garage full of projects. Uh, but now that I think of it, I did just pick up two more cabinets uh, to be restored. But we'll talk about those in future episodes. Uh, today it's all about helping people. I'm a nice guy. I like helping out my friends. You know, a wise man once said, people helping people. It's powerful stuff. And I especially like helping my friends when it has something to do with, you know, arcade machines, which I'm super passionate about. I love these arcade games. I love fixing them, restoring them, playing them, collecting them. It's great. And I love sharing that with my friends, with, you know, viewers of this channel and the, the friends that I've made in this awesome hobby. You know, I've, I've picked up cabinets before for other people, and sometimes I've even shown it on the channel. I picked up a, a timber, uh, actually from Jeff Kinder, from our mutual, uh, for our mutual buddy Troy. Uh, he actually picked that up from my house uh, during a live stream of the Coin Jam podcast. Uh, I picked up, this wasn't on uh, an episode, but I picked up a Pango for uh, my buddy and Overtime Arcade channel member, Russ. And I also picked up an empty gyrus cabinet for Cameron down in Nashville, uh, who you know from Facebook and the Claw Forums, and he's been on the Coin Jam podcast. I picked that up for Cameron on my way to dropping off the Pango for Russell at Cameron, sort of making it halfway uh, out to Colorado. Uh, but anyway, uh, I picked up four more games recently for friends of mine, and uh, I wanted to share that experience with you, and we'll check out all these games. So, um, yeah, and, you know, my, my friends reach out to me sometimes when they see a game that's available in my area. They ask me if I'll grab it for them and hold it on to them until, you know, me or they can get the game out to them. So that's basically what I've done in this episode just four times. And these are some really, really cool games. So the first one here is Gigantic. It's a cockpit. Uh, this is a Sega Space Tactics. I had never really heard of this game before. Uh, it looks enormous. We're going to have, you know, maybe some trouble getting this onto the truck and getting it home. But really sort of excited to take on this challenge of... of loading a cockpit into my pickup truck and bringing it home sort of all by myself. And this is for Dillweed, uh, who you, uh, who's, his real name is Taylor. He's got a YouTube channel. He's also very, you know, active in the hobby and all the different communities. He's also an Overtime Arcade channel member. Uh, this is the, the first of two cabinets that we're uh, picking up for Dillweed in this episode. Um, we're also picking up, we, we went on, I went on a trip to New York and coming back, I picked up a, a couple more machines um that space tactics was up in frederick maryland not too far away from uh, where i live but these other two i think we're in uh th this first one here is a kind of really uncommon uh cinematronics world series countertop or bar top uh, machine this is a little teeny tiny arcade machine squished down into a box that can fit onto a countertop uh picked that up from a um it was a, a storage unit in new jersey right not too far away i think from jeff kinder's place and uh, loaded that into the truck. And in the same trip in Pennsylvania, I grabbed another machine for uh, Dillweed. The, <laughs> I'm all frazzled. This World Series is for Cameron, so a second machine for Cameron. And a second machine for Dillweed is, is this thing, this Spacian. I'm not really sure what this is all about. It's a beautiful looking machine. Picked this up in uh, Pennsylvania for, uh, for uh, Dillweed, for Taylor. So two machines for Taylor. This is the second, the, the World Series is the second one for uh, Cameron. And then there's this thing, this beautiful, beautiful NARC, Williams NARC. I picked this up for my buddy Lex, who's out in Missouri. And uh, we're going to get all these home. We're going to pick them all up, bring them home, kind of, you know, uh, crack them open. Look what's going on. Look what we have in front of us. Uh, a couple of them are working. We're going to see what we can do with the others. And uh, yeah, this should be a lot of fun. So if you want to tag along with me on this adventure, why don't we rewind the clock a little bit, head out on the road, and pick up four arcade machines in a single episode. Let's go! All right, it's all loaded up on the truck. <laughs> Good thing it comes apart into two pieces, otherwise I never would have been able to get this. Uh, the seller, a uh, really nice person. She helped me out a little bit, uh, getting it sort of situated and loaded. But uh, 
yeah, I'm gonna finish uh, wrapping this up. Hopefully the weather holds. Uh, <laughs> and then I'll get it home and off the truck. So uh, Taylor, it's time to get excited. All right, first stop, mission accomplished. <laughs> and this little one actually fits in the cab, the back seat of my uh, truck. Don't even have to put it in the back because I will need room in the back for another one. But uh, yeah, so here it is. Uh, I'll show this to you in a minute. Well, it'll be later my time, but only about a minute your time. Maybe that's a little clue of what that is, Cinematronics. But uh, anyhow, let's get back on the road and go make our second pickup. And here's pickup number two of the day. Another one for <laughs> Taylor, AKA Dillweed, Overtime Arcade channel member. This one's really cool. Beautiful artwork. I've never seen this thing before. So super nice uh, seller. Had a garage full of mostly pens, couple of vids, but uh, this is a very, very interesting and unique uh, video game arcade machine. Some very unique, beautiful artwork. So. Let's get back on the road, get this thing home, and uh, take a look at what we got. And there we go, all loaded up on the truck. This actually took quite a long time. Uh, <laughs> super nice elderly gentleman. Uh, we had to move like half his living room furniture and really kind of navigate it through the house. And this cabinet is a beast. It's like a three box design with the, the monitor box and like the control panel box and then the base of the cabinet. Um, and uh, you know, there really isn't a good side to lay it flat on. Even the side, there's like bump outs on all four sides of the cabinet. So we're transporting it straight up, which should be best. And uh, yeah, let's uh, get this on the road. Another reason why I had to stand it up is I made another stop. <laughs> Picked up another game, but this one is for me. And my hands are filthy. Uh, this one's for me. We'll talk about this in a completely different video, so you won't see this for a while, but let's get this narc home and with all the other games uh, that I've been picking up for folks. All right, here we are, safe and sound. All four cabinets, all four games are in the garage. I'm not even sure how to count these. <laughs> you know, of course, the Space Tactics is a cockpit, so that's really like two cabinets. Uh, but then the World Series is only a countertop, so that doesn't even count as a full cabinet. So is this like uh, four, four and a quarter <laughs> arcade machines here? Anyway, uh, yeah, everything uh, made it home safely. It's an absolutely beautiful day here. Some of these have been in the garage, you know, kind of in hiding in the background for maybe even a couple of months. Uh, the NARC uh, being the latest edition, that's actually going to be the first one to leave. It's scheduled to be picked up tomorrow, which is one of the reasons I'm shooting this video <laughs> today. And uh, yeah, of course, again, we have our Sega Space Tactics uh, cockpit. Uh, then here we have, I don't even know what you call this, it's like Galaxy or Spacian. Uh, it's a, like a, a bootleg or a clone of Galaxian. Again, the Cinematronics World Series countertop and a wonderful NARC uh, there in the background. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of, uh, you know, I'm happy to do favors uh, for uh, friends of mine, but um, I'm you know, kind of also excited to <laughs> get these out of the garage and uh, reclaim, reclaim some space back that I might be able to use for other projects and other things, and I know my, my wife will be happy to uh, see the room come back as well. But before I let these things go, I wanna take a, a closer look at them in this video. And don't worry, even though I don't own these things, 
and uh, they really belong to friends of mine. I have gotten explicit permission uh, from, from all of the owners uh, to take a closer look, uh, and we're gonna fire up a couple of them, the two that are allegedly working, we're gonna, which is the, the, the Spacian and the NARC. Uh, we're gonna take a look at what's going on with the World Series and see if uh, we might be able to get to, you know, test it and get it working. Uh, I do know, however, that the sp uh, Space Tactics uh, <laughs> is definitely not working. Uh, it's missing uh, the PCB, for example, um, which you know, Taylor knows, uh, you know, Taylor AKA Dillweed knows that uh, <laughs> that might be very difficult or near impossible uh, to track down. But let me get this plastic wrap off. All right, and uh, I wrap this up when I loaded it onto the truck just because it was drizzling a little bit uh, that day and I didn't want to risk any any damage happening to this uh, wonderful cabinet. It's it's a bit rough, you know. Of the um, of the four games here, it's certainly in, you know, definitely not in the best condition of these four. Um, and fortunately, we'll even pull it apart a little bit. You know, this this co uh, this cockpit uh, comes apart in two pieces because there really would have been no way. Um, you know, even to load this onto my pickup truck uh, if it if it didn't. So there's a, a seam that comes right down the middle. I think it's, I don't know, uh, three bolts on the top, um, one on each side, and I, maybe there's some others too, but it really comes apart uh, nicely. And, um, you know, when you do that, it, it really is a lot more manageable. The, the back where I'm at now, has the the monitor and the PCB and you know essentially all of the elect electronics and the other half of the cabinet uh, is really just the bench and the control panel that part is you know actually quite light um, and the the back part's not too bad either but it's certainly the heavier piece of the two um, I really don't know anything about this game to be honest uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw that it was available for sale, and I think originally they wanted a ton for it. Um, but you know, the seller you know did look at it and know that there you know it was missing uh, the PCB. I think the story was um, so a husband and wife, and one of their parents was uh, into this sort of stuff years ago and had bought this for a restoration, uh, but never got around to it. And you know, they were moving out of the area and wanted to get rid of it. But uh, yeah, Taylor got it for a great price, but you know, it's gonna be quite a challenge to track down a PCB. So essentially this, I think, is a little bit like Atari Star Wars. You know, not a vector game, um, but it's a cockpit, right? So you sit down here with this uh, yoke uh, style control. You can see we've got very Japanese looking um, coin slots here. Um, yeah, it says, uh, shoot down the invading enemy with missiles and base missiles. Maybe those are bombs. Uh, enemy attack can be uh, fended with the barrier. So maybe there's a, yeah, there's a shield button right there that says area, uh, energy barrier uh, button and uh, game over if all five bases are destroyed. Uh, we can see somebody has scratched up uh, the, uh, the screen here. And I guess these are cigarette burns. This is the most incredible amount of cigarette burns that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, I don't know if somebody was intentionally doing this um, yeah, so I don't know what you're gonna do about that, Taylor. Maybe you just chalk this up to like battle damage and say it's battle damage from this uh, <laughs> ship uh, fighting. But I think there are some like LED displays over here for, I don't know if those are, yeah, there's probably LEDs um, that light up there. There's a, uh, a display here uh, for the score. And uh, here's the coin box uh, down here. I don't think, I don't think I have the keys for this. I'm gonna have to check somewhere, but yeah, there's a credit light right there. Um, yeah, yoke, very little sort of uh, distance, travel distance uh, in the yoke and just a single thumb fire button on top, right? And uh, very cool, oh, we got base missiles. Wow, buttons up there. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. I guess this is the start button. There must've been some sort of, um, cover over this originally, this back black piece sort of seems like it was ripped off and then this, you, know, you can even see a little bit sort of around these carriage bolts. Um, so yeah, that's basically what's going on in the sort of back half or the front half maybe of the cabinet. We've got 
sort of a you know, ridged platform down there where your feet go and a little uh, bench seat. And in the back here, uh, this part is sort of translucent so you can see through, you know, spectators can kind of watch your game. And there's this uh, post here. So you hit your head and you don't break the, uh, the plexi, uh, I'm guessing. So coming back around over here, taking a look at what we got. So uh, there's some sort of like motorized uh, mirror. So this is like a half silver mirror. Uh, I believe it looks to be uh, intact. And then there's a motor up here that I think moves the, uh, the mirror around uh, somehow. I'm not really familiar with the function of this. I've never, I've never played this game before. And you can sort of see how the mirror is reflecting that sort of panel uh, down there. We can take a closer look at uh, you know, some sort of background uh, effect. I don't know if this is a little bit like, um, uh, I don't know, uh, Tron or uh, Asteroids Deluxe or whatever. And then we have another plexi over the, uh, the actual monitor, which I believe, I don't know what this is. Is this a black and white game? <laughs> I don't even know. And so, yeah, when you're, when you're playing the game, you know, you're seeing the image being projected you know, onto the screen and then through this you know, uh, plexi, and then reflect it off of this mirror and then through this uh, plexi again. So I'm not sure what that effect, you know, ultimately, ultimately uh, looks like, but very, very, very interesting uh, game. Um, there's another uh, access panel down here. I'm not even really sure what that is supposed to go to. Uh, I can't even see uh, what's going on back here. Yeah, very, very interesting uh, design. Let me get mounted on a tripod and we can uh, try looking at opening up the back and see what's going on uh, back there. Okay, coming around to the back of the cabinet, I did find the little baggie of all the, uh, the parts and everything uh, for, uh, for Space Tactics, uh, and it's got like the, the bolts, the carriage bolts that hold uh, the two pieces together. Unfortunately, it's got two keys, but both of them are for the back door, and as you can see, the back door actually, cam lock has been removed, so uh, I don't know, Taylor, you might have to uh, pick or drill uh, the lock for the coin door. We've got some stickers here that says Sega Enterprises Limited, not Sega of America. Uh, 120 volt, 2 amp. Um, let's see, uh, serial number 76536. Uh, we've got some, uh, I think this is like an FCC sticker. Some other stuff has kind of been worn off. And uh, the back door is just sort of hanging out in there. So let's uh, take it out. All right, and uh, what's interesting, we'll do this, uh, kind of maneuver this around on tight quarters. And uh, Taylor was very, um, you know, wanted me to make sure that I was able to, to get the back door and didn't uh, leave it behind because the back door also has a piece of artwork here uh, that would be impossible to source um, that, you know, makes part of the, the background uh, image. And right off the bat, we see a black light uh, here. And actually, I missed it before. Uh, there's another black light sort of you know, facing away uh, from the user, I think designed to reflect off of that mirror or whatnot. We've got some, uh, I guess, maybe dip switch uh, adjustment settings. And looking down here, I'll move the back door sort of more out of the way. All right. And uh, we've got our, let's see. Uh, Transformer assembly uh, down here. I'm guessing that is a modern switching power supply that replaced it at some point. Man, there's a lot going on. Um, I think those are two different sound amp boards. Uh, I believe this game has stereo sound. I think there's a speaker above uh, the monitor and another one kind of below the seat uh, of the user. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't really, not really familiar with this. It looks different than like Sega Carnival or Frogger anything like that. I think this is maybe the soundboard, just a ton of caps and uh, vertically mounted resistors, which is kind of kind of nuts to see that. A lot of pots up here. Oh man, I'm not sure exactly what that is. That, that can't possibly be the game PCB. Um, I don't even know, I guess. Yeah, the game PCB would be mounted over here and there are two you know, very large edge connector uh, housings right there on the um, on the uh, the harness, but yeah, here's what's going on. I guess maybe there's another motor down here at the bottom to move the monitor around. I don't know, is that force feedback or something? And uh, here's our monitor. I can't quite tell 
what this what exactly this thing is. Maybe it's not a black and white. I don't know. I probably should have looked that up, but wild, absolutely, absolutely wild game. And I know Taylor's been looking for this for a while. There's actually like, I never really even heard of this game before until recently, I guess a bunch, you know, popped up. People were talking about them on Clove and seeing the, um, the, there's a couple for sale across the country. So what an interesting, interesting, uncommon game. And uh, I'm sure uh, it'll be <laughs> a very fun project for Taylor to restore. Okay, next up, let's take a closer look at Cameron's World Series Baseball Cinematronics World Series Countertop. And uh, yeah, this is a really cool and unique game. Uh, I guess technically designed for two players, but maybe it'd be a little bit difficult to crowd around this thing. Uh, it's a baseball game, uh, it sits on a countertop. It has a little carousel so you can spin it around uh, and go back and forth. Um, there is a model number and serial number sticker, but I don't know. I think the, the numbers are completely faded off. Uh, we've got a Cinematronics Incorporated uh, FCC notice, and we got some handles on either side. And yeah, this has a, I don't know, is that a 13 inch or nine inch uh, maybe uh, CRT monitor? on the front with a tinted uh, plexi uh, bezel. Uh, we've got a single slot uh, coin slot here, which is kind of kind of falling out. Um, <laughs> is this designed to kind of come out? Yeah, look at that. All right. Uh, well, it's there, it's intact. Not going anywhere. But, uh, hmm. There we go. That's how it goes in, okay. Kind of a Japanese style too, like that reminds me of like a Donkey Kong style uh, coin slot. And you know, kind of like my Leland um, uh, quarterback, you know, Leland sort of is what Cinematronics became after it was acquired, uh, I think by Trade West. Um, it's got these flick stick um, uh, joysticks. So these, you know, one for uh, pitching and one for batting. I think the batting one is maybe missing its little rubber uh, top here. We've got some interesting uh, small square buttons and this like, it feels like it's not mounted all the way. And this is like a plastic uh, control panel, which I don't know about that. And this part feels again, like it's not mounted. Small red uh, square buttons for one and two players. We've got a flick stick here to control batting. You can sort of pull back and let go, kind of adjust the, the angle and the, the strength of the hit. Uh, we've got a aim or run slash cutoff button, an extra base button, a go back button. And I don't know what this would be. Swing? No. I have no idea what that would be. Uh, and again, our pitching flick stick uh, here. This one feels like it's much better shape than the, the batting one. You know, uh, Cameron, you're going to need a new control panel overlay. I don't know if anyone makes these. We've got a bunch of cigarette burns over here, lots of tears. And again, this is like not particularly strong plastic. It's like dashboard <laughs> plastic. Um, let's turn it around and open up the back. Uh, we do have a a fan, I guess, uh, on the side and the vent's been all smashed up. I think the other side doesn't have um, really anything on it, right? Just the handle. And uh, these locks are kind of busted up. Let me find a flat head to sort of open them. All right, so these, these locks are not really doing their job. Um, there we go. And there's our back door comes off. We got some vents at the bottom. And yeah, really kind of uh, densely uh, packed in uh, here, if you can see what's going on. So this H logo uh, is for Hantorex. Uh, I don't know if this is like a little mini polo. It says Hantorex right there. We've got a speaker mounted in here. That's bizarre. Uh, so the speaker doesn't actually make it out to the back of the cabinet. Um, and then it kind of goes through this fan. Is that how it was or originally? Or this is, is this like a hack job? I think this is original. We've got our power cord, we'll pull that out. Um, let's see, there's an interlock switch here that's been permanently or uh, with a zip tie sort of held closed. We've got our board uh, down here. And uh, there's a little platform here underneath the, uh, uh, the monitor. Um, See if I can figure out what this monitor is. I'm not immediately seeing a, a model number. There's a sticker that's kind of fallen off right here. Oh, here we go. All right. This is a 
Cantorex uh, 900E, is that the name of this monitor? Made in October 1985 in Florence, Italy. Wonderful. So we have an Italian monitor <laughs> in a, a game about an American sport made by an American company. Um, so, yeah. Um, there's a button back here. I don't know if that's for test mode or something. And I'm curious, I'm not even seeing it. Uh, that must be the switching power supply. Let me take you off the, uh, the uh, tripod here. Uh, it looks to me like there is a switching power supply kind of mounted uh, back there. So um, there's a grounding strap disconnected. Very, very interesting what's going on here. Um, so, oh, the uh, coin, coin bucket is missing. I guess the only way to access the coin bucket is to take the back door off. And again, here's that red button. I don't know if that's a test switch or a credit switch or something. Um, and Cameron, I think, you know, he bought this kind of either untested or, uh, you know, not working. So let me uh, get set up. Uh, we'll get the tripod set up. And I want to see about accessing uh, this power supply down here and at least trying out the power supply, uh, seeing if that's working and, and trying to see what actually is going on. So let me get set up for that. And we'll do a little bit of uh, diagnostic troubleshooting. Okay, I was able to get the little sled that the uh, power supply and isolation transformer sit on, the ISO sort of farther in uh, towards the front of the cabinet. Uh, got that pulled out. Uh, I disconnected all of the, the loads. So uh, disconnected the power going to the PCB and to the monitor uh, and to the uh, fan. Uh, I've got it all plugged in and ready to go. I just need to pull the interlock switch. I took the, the zip tie off of that for now. I've got my uh, multimeter on AC volts hooked up to the uh, monitor power input, and I should just be able to pull this and hopefully we'll get something like 120 or so on that multimeter. All right, 120. So I think that means uh, the uh, isolation transformer uh, is probably at least working. We'll pull these out and um, let me, let's see. Where is the one that goes to the fan? That's right here. Oh, and that's interesting. That's not female. Those are male connectors. Uh, that's also about 119, so I think that's okay. We'll switch to DC volts and we'll check our uh, power supply. Uh, this is an older uh, Peter Cho uh, or Peter Chu. So let's see. Ground should be right here and five volts should be right here. We got 5.8, that's way too high, all right? And let's see, 12 volts is 15. So this is way, way, way up. Let me go grab a, or maybe I can turn this down by, actually, let me grab a tool. I think that thing is cranked all the way to the max. All right, got my TV adjustment tools, which also come in handy for adjusting power supplies, and I will hook up my probes like this with one hand, hold them in place. And hopefully this board isn't fried. If it was running at six volts, that is not, it's not a good, not a good thing. Let's turn that all the way down. Let's see. All right, that's good for that. And we'll check uh, the 12 volts now and 12 volts is at 13.5. That's a little high. I don't love that. We turn that down a little bit. So maybe we'll be under volting with five volts. Might need to put a new power supply in this thing. Now let's see what that does to our five volts though. Uh, I think the five volts is the more important. Uh, voltage. So let's get that right at five. All right. And that'll be what on 12. Don't really love that. Uh, let me think about what I want to do real quick. Okay. I actually sent a, a text to Cameron to see if he wants me to try uh, powering it up despite the, uh, the voltages not being uh, perfect. This monitor is just so bizarre to me. I've never, I've never even had uh, my hands on a, a Hantorex uh, before. 
And what I want to try doing is, you know, the, the voltage for the monitor at, you know, 120 uh, seems safe enough to connect. So I want to test the monitor. I'll use my crafty mech uh, test pattern generator. And I'm even going here to, to plug in uh, <laughs> the, uh, the video and, and sync wires uh, for the TPG. And I think something's weird back here. I'm looking at these wires and I'm like, so I see, you know, blue, green, red. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Blue, green, red. Um, and then black uh, or gray, yellow, and, and black. And I'm like, okay, well, assuming, you know, our red, green, and blue are the RGB colors, um, you know, that's not the way it's typically uh, configured, right? Usually it goes RGB sync or RGB ground uh, and then your two uh, syncs. And sure enough, there's printing on this PCB that says RG, you know, from right to left, RGB ground and then positive and uh, um, uh, vertical and positive horizontal uh, sync. And uh, so I think these, these uh, uh, video and sync wires are plugged in wrong. Um, so let me disconnect these. So somebody has been mucking around uh, with this thing and, and I believe plugged in these wires incorrectly. So let me plug them in the way I think they're supposed to go. So here we go. R to the right, RGB, and I'm putting them in halfway so they won't get hung up on the, uh, Trying to squeeze them in, and then our two sinks. Yeah, these are gonna fight me going in, aren't they? All right, all right. I think I think that's good. So I'm gonna turn on my test pattern generator, and let's move around. Let's move the the tripod over to the front of the cabinet. All right, coming around like this, and all right. Well. Get the tripod positioned right here. Heck of a glare, I know, and reflection. Um, and uh, let me switch the setting to uh, um, 60 frames per second. All right, hopefully the image will look okay, if an image even comes on at all. So, TPG is on. I will reconnect the power for the monitor. All right, monitor is plugged in. Game is plugged in. I should just have to pull the interlock switch. Three, two, one. I heard something. I heard something. I don't think we have any kind of image though. Uh, let's see. See if I can tell if there's net glow. Yeah, the way this thing is set up, I'm not even going to be able to see if there's net glow. Let me try putting a mirror in there. So I can fit my Dell's Arcade mirror in there. Yeah, I don't see any net glow. So let me, tech, let me test the, uh, the fuses on the, uh, the monitor chassis and see what we're dealing with there. Okay, I checked the two fuses. Uh, they both tested okay with the continuity test on my multimeter. So I wanna uh, kind of, last thing I wanna try is it's checking the B plus voltage. So I've got my multimeter set to DC volts. I've got it connected to the, I think it's SP20 uh, for testing the B plus, and I've got the black lead uh, attached to the chassis frame. I'm not actually gonna be able to adjust the B plus because the uh, the pot to do that is way, way, way up there in front of the cabinet. and and I don't feel comfortable reaching my hand in like that with the monitor uh, running. So we're going to give it a shot. This should be around 115 uh, volts. So let's see what we got. Three, two, one. 150. So uh, that's way too high and it's climbing. Uh, so 155. It's supposed to be 115. So I'm guessing this, um, there's some kind of issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that uh, Cameron's going to have to uh, deal with. So, yeah, um, I'll see if he wants to contact me back and if he wants me to try, uh, you know, sending power to the board and see if I can at least get it playing blind. Uh, but as of right now, monitor's not working. Maybe it's an HP shutdown. I don't know anything about these Hanter X monitors. Uh, MTC 900E is the model number. So, uh, yeah, at least there, you know, there's something going on in here, but uh, no signs of life from the monitor or the PCB. But again, we haven't tested that PCB. Okay, I got the go ahead from Cameron to see uh, if the PCB is working. Uh, his exact words were, yeah, go ahead. So I feel <laughs> like we can do this. 
So I'll put my multimeter to uh, DC volts. Yep, you can see that. Uh, I've got the PCB plugged back into power. The monitor is completely disconnected, but the power and the video are disconnected. And uh, I'm gonna start this up with um, my multimeter on the five volts and I'll be ready to adjust it. So why don't we uh, do that? Three, two, one. So that's a little bit low, 4.98. And this is our plus 12. Not too bad. Um, this might be playing. I hear some kind of sound out of the speaker. Uh, I don't know if this is on free play or what. I'll try pressing this red button. Thank you very much. Look at that. Did you hear that? <laughs> it said, thank you very much. So let's start a game. Um, is it still going? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't know how to start it. I'm pressing all the buttons. And like I said, I got no uh, screen. Um, but there's something. Cameron. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're hearing that, right? It says, thank you very much every time I hit this thank button. You very much. So there's some logic working. Something's happening. Uh, <laughs> I just, I don't know how to start a game. Maybe those start buttons aren't working. But uh, let me think. Uh, let me go one step further just because I'm an awesome guy. I'm going to hook up an extra monitor and see, uh, see what's going on. Okay, I've got my Qbert monitor actually hooked up to this Cinematronics World Series countertop. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't love the fact that I've been using this uh, you know, vertical 4900 is my test monitor lately, but it's just, you know, the most easy thing to get to. So got it all hooked up. Let me power up the monitor. Um, oh, I had unplugged it from the wall. Let me address that real quick. <laughs> Scared myself for a second. All right. Main power is plugged back in, turning on the monitor. All right. We've got HV on that. And we might see some raster. So let me go ahead and power on the countertop. Three, two, one. All right, that's running. We've got static. Uh, is it a sync issue? Let's see. Let's try adjusting the sync real quick. All right, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, we do have an image on the screen. It's kind of shifted way, way over. I don't know if it's a monitor thing because this monitor has worked for me on other games. Could be just, I don't know, some uh, quirk of the board or maybe the board is having some kind of video section issue. I'm climbing through all these games to turn off the house lights. Hopefully, oh, I've got to kind of navigate my way back in the dark. All right, so yeah, you can see uh, what does it say? Super baseball double play. What the heck? Home run. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. One coin, one player, start additional coins. Let me try coining up with uh, the button here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Pull back on joystick to select. Okay. Again, I gotta, there's like nowhere to walk. Hold back on joystick. Something's happening, right? Things are happening on the screen. I can't see what they are though. <laughs> okay, let me climb on back. I'm gonna knock stuff over and hurt myself. Let's see. Pull back on joystick to select. Press A button to enter selection. I don't know what this means. A button. I don't know if there's an A button.
that's changing a selection, right? All the buttons I'm pressing don't seem to be doing anything. Anyway, so um, yeah, Cameron, that's good news. Monitor's dead or not totally dead. I mean, the B plus voltage is way too high. And uh, something might be messed up with the, uh, the video section of the board, but hey, something's working. We've got logic running, it's displaying an image. So, okay, let's, uh, let's turn our attention to the, uh, the last two games, both of which should be, fingers crossed, fully working. Okay, now let's turn our attention to the two allegedly working games. Uh, we'll start with uh, <laughs> Taylor or Dillweed's uh, Spacian. And uh, this is really, really well wrapped. Uh, the guy that sold it is really a, more of a pinball person. And this has, you know, cardboard on the, the corners and, you know, it's all wrapped and it's got uh, <laughs> uh, a moving blanket. But uh, I got Dillweed's permission to, uh, or Taylor's permission to open this bad boy up. Because this is definitely something unique. You know, he'll have, uh, you know, on his channel, he'll have, um, you know, I'm sure a video about this at some point. But um, yeah, maybe we'll reuse all these packing materials. Whoops. Okay. Look at this, and this is such a bizarre game. Taylor has such an eclectic uh, collection of uh, rare, you know, uh, games that you know a lot of people, myself included, have you know <laughs> never even heard of a lot of the stuff he has. That's just the kind of collection he's gone for, which is really cool. A lot of Japanese stuff. Um, so, and this is also something that, just a bizarre, bizarre thing. Come on. All right. Coming out well. Okay. And yeah, Taylor will be coming out from Indiana with a... Uh, uh, a box truck, so we'll be able to get this loaded up onto that, no problem. But look how beautiful. This is some of the most incredible artwork that I've ever seen on a, you know, clone or bootleg game. Because usually, people that built those, you know, whoops, uh, didn't really spend, wow, didn't really put much uh, effort into the artwork. And this is incredible. It's a little bit dirty. Um, you know, there's, you know, it's definitely unrestored. But my goodness, I'm kind of uh, in awe of this right now. So let me bring you in for a closer look here. So even right off the bat, this game is confused about what its name is. Marquis says Spacian, which I don't know what that means. But down here on the, on the bezel, uh, there's an instruction card that says, let's challenge Galaxy. So is the name of this game Galaxy or is it Spacian? But my goodness, what awesome awesome artwork. I mean, this is kind of just like a off the shelf font, I think, which whatever. And there's this sort of blue, <laughs> I don't know what shape, get your mind out of the gutter. I don't know what shape uh, this would be like a key sort of shape. Just incredible, incredible bezel artwork. It's like a space dragon or something going on over there. We got a beautiful woman down here. Uh, we've got square buttons for one and two player start. And just like uh, Galaxian, right? Just uh, left and right, you know, one axis uh, control, two way uh, joystick, and a shoot button. Um, you know, sort of a Nintendo style coin door here. And I don't know if this is like gray T molding, is kind of what it looks like to me. And the side art is unbelievable. Um, the colors and the lines, and it's <laughs> borderline not safe for work. But what an incredible, incredibly beautiful uh, machine. We got a great kick plate artwork there, and uh, you won't really be able to see it all that well. Basically the same on this side over here. Um, and we've got some keys on the control panel. It's like the control, the control panel is really bizarre here, right? So not only does it have these square buttons uh, for start buttons, there's you know almost no artwork on the control panel, which is really just uh, insane. So let me, uh, let me grab, something to get these keys off real quick. All right, there we go, whoops, dropped them. And uh, I think these were in some kind of auction. Yeah, this, like I said, this is a, the, the seller was a pinball guy. And I think he just saw this uh, game in a 
auction and bought it on a whim. And uh, now it's going to go to Taylor to enjoy. All right. Let's see. Yeah, that's not the right key. All right. Okay. Look at that. Uh, all right. We've got a coin box here, totally empty. I don't see any kind of um, coin counter. Uh, why don't we go around the back of the cabinet, grab, I guess these are the back door keys. Let's come around to the back and see if there's <laughs> anything interesting going on back here. Find a good place to set you up, set up a camera so you can see what I'm doing. All right. And the whole back is just gray. Oh, look at this. Wow. Okay. We have a serial number etched into the back of the cabinet. That looks like 102 to me. And I wonder if that really means this, this is the second one because often with serial numbers, they don't literally start at zero. So maybe they started at 100 and this is really number two, <laughs> which would be insane. So there we go. Back door comes right off. And this is this cabinet is really uh, mostly empty space. Get you off the tripod and see what's going on here. Actually, let me grab a flashlight real quick. I mean, if we're going to look, we should look at what's going on because I doubt that we'll see <laughs> another one of these games on my channel at any time in the future. We likely won't see any of these games at all. So, all right, coming down, looking at the bottom of the start, we got some wiring diagrams, schematics, uh, over here on the side of the walls, dip switch settings. And coming over here, uh, there is an interlock switch and we have our uh, uh, isolation transformer. We've got our board right here. Um, yeah, and that looks uh, similar to like a Namco uh, Pac-Man or a Galaxian sort of uh, board to me a little bit. Um, let's see what this monitor is all about. All right, taking a look in here. Yeah, I'm just not seeing anything. Uh, this is one of the cleanest cabinets I've ever seen. This, it doesn't look like it's ever, I mean, this looks like it's gotta be home use only. Um, just a little bit of debris in here. That's like a, a piece of paper towel. Uh, I found a couple of old movie ticket stubs. I mean, they're not that old. So the movies were $3.75 and $4. Um, there's, all I see is Japanese writing uh, on the, uh, on the, the monitor. Uh, it says made in Japan and there's, I'm assuming that says uh, high voltage. It's just in Japanese. There is, however, now that I'm seeing it, a, uh, yeah, a lot of Japanese. Uh, wow. Okay. The coin counter says 57,315. It looks like, which is crazy. The condition of this cabinet, uh, I don't, I don't see how it's had that many plays. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me, Look from the side here. Oh, okay. Um, I guess it's a CMA20HG. I'm going to have to look up, or Professor Pac-Man's going to have to look up. Oh, it's a TOEI. Uh, T-O-E-I. Made in Japan. Okay. CMA20HG. So this is a TOEI monitor, which I guess makes sense. So, and like I said, I do have... <laughs> I do have, oh, this is, uh, let me show you this real quick. We'll come back around to the front of the cabinet and we'll fire this bad boy up. And like I said, I do have uh, Taylor's permission to turn this on and give it a try. Um, there's a sticker uh, right down here. It says Spacian ID number 4599. I'm guessing that's an inventory uh, uh, tag. It says owned and operated by uh, Theater Amusements. Um, which maybe that makes sense with the movie ticket stubs uh, from uh, Calabasas, California. So this thing has been all over the place. Yeah, at some point this was in California. I picked it up in Pennsylvania. It's sitting in Virginia right now and uh, it'll be on its way to, to Indiana uh, pretty soon. So let's come back here and uh, get a shot with the, uh, hey, how we doing reflection of, uh, I wanna see the marquee light and the monitor light up uh, all at once. So we pull the power cord out of the back. 
All right, we're all plugged in and ready to go. And I, I actually am just noticing here a little bit of damage on the bottom of the back panel. I'm guessing from being uh, hand trucked uh, around, but I'm going to pull the interlock switch. So here we go. Three, two, one. All right, we've got HV. I heard the DeGoss coil. I think we should be up and running. And let's see what we've got. Let me turn off the house lights. The, uh, the marquee light is struggling a little bit. Maybe needs a new starter. There we go. Let me turn off the house lights. That monitor looks great. And yeah, it looks uh, <laughs> very, very much uh, similar to Galaxian. Um, the sun's still going down. So, and I've got all the garage doors open because it's just gorgeous out right now. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to see how it's looking. Wow. What a beautiful game. What a beautiful game. All right, let's come in here and take a look at this. Okay. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? And yeah, this looks just like Galaxian. <laughs> uh, you know, if you've never played it before, Galaxian being the uh, predecessor to Galaga, um, I think I'm about to be interrupted in a, in a second by my family. So let me let that happen and then we'll get set up to uh, do some gameplay video. All right, I think I've got a couple of minutes now. So let's play some Spacian. It says fantastic Spacians destroy enemy forces. Here's what the enemies are worth. And yeah, it looks exactly like uh, uh, Galaxian. So there we go. We got a credit on. Push start button, bonus Galaxip. <laughs> so is that like a Galaxian ship for 5,000 points? And uh, yeah, start a one player game. Oh yeah. <laughs> one shot on the screen at a time. Nope, gotta pay attention, Charlie. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness. We're definitely gonna be playing a second game. Oh my gosh. Is regular Galaxian this hard? I don't remember it being this hard. Yeah, and the lack of multiple shots is... No. Wow, that's hard. Game over. Let's let's definitely uh, play another game. All right, and uh, yeah, both credit switches work. Uh, let's start a two-player game just for uh, just for grins. <laughs> I'll be able to last a little bit longer. There we go. Okay. No, this is tough. There we go. You gotta get them while they're turning. There we go. No, wow, they're just dive bombing me. All right, here's player two start. Okay, let's see if I can beat my high score. I score at least a thousand points. Got her, right? Yeah, the fact that there's only one shot. There we go. Wow, they really. <laughs> I gotta learn to avoid that. Okay, okay. Back to player one. No. I stink. I stink at this game. Maybe I should just focus on, you know, defeating the enemies in the background and really just avoiding the ones dive bombing me. I feel like they move. Like when the 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 shot is about to hit them in the, the back row, they like stop so that they don't so they don't fly into it. And I'm really uh, you know embarrassed to admit that I'm not super familiar with Galaxian. Yeah, you know, I play it when I see it, but yeah, you know, I've never owned it or Okay. Come on, clear the first board. Last guy. 
Last guy. Come on, buddy. Want some of this? No? Come on. Come on. Nope. Come on, Charlie. Come here. Come here. Come get some. Nope. <laughs> okay. I know this is not the most exciting thing. And this, and they did move quick. Oh my gosh. It really does not want me to complete a level. There we go. I did it. <laughs> Never before seen on my channel. Okay, here we go. Same thing again. Wow, he's moving fast now. This game is... Yeah, you can't hold it down for auto fire. So I'm just really just sending it. And I'm trying desperately. I guess I'm almost at 4,000 points. I'm a lot better than I did the first time. All right, I think you're getting the general idea. So why don't I uh, <laughs> surrender my lives on player two and really focus on player one here. All right, let's see, I think this is my last life. You see how they like don't move right at the end? Like just as my shot's about to get them. We have crossed the 4,000 point barrier, ladies and gentlemen. And I wonder what the world, oh, there we go. I wonder what the world record is <laughs> for Spacey and I'll have to look it up real quick and I'll just uh, waste my life here. All right, so so that's it. That's what, uh, that's Spacian or Galaxy or whatever this game is supposed to be. So why don't I wrap that up and uh, we'll turn our attention to this beautiful NARC. And last but not least, we have NARC. <laughs> what a, an incredible, an incredible, incredibly iconic game uh, released by Williams in 1988 after the crash and before, you know, the whole Street Fighter craze, um, you know, ultra violent, right? Uh, you know, you're, ostensibly you're playing a, a, you know, narcotics officer trying to arrest drug dealers on the street, but you really spend most of your time blowing them away. And uh, really, really cool, awesome game. Um, this is in really actually nice condition. So it's unrestored. Uh, and if I was going to grade this, I'd probably give it, you know, 97, 98, something like that. Uh, the, the red team molding in particular should probably be replaced. It's cracked in a you know, bunch of the corners. And um, the control panel overlay could probably stand to be replaced. It's got some cracking on this bend right here and a little bit of, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cigarette burns uh, right there. You know, the cabinet's in awesome, awesome shape. Um, one of the, this is one of the nicest games uh, in my house right now in terms of uh, condition. Let's come around to the back of the cabinet and see what's going on. And this is such an interesting cabinet design. It's like this three box design. There's a upper box for the uh, monitor. Of course, there is a middle box or thorax <laughs> for the control panel and then a lower box for the base of the cabinet. And that's where most of the electronics live. So let's come back here and see what's going on. Um, let's see, it's the best angle for you to see what I'm doing here. Uh, the upper box, um, really has to be unscrewed, uh, to get to the, the back of the monitor, I guess for safety, there's six, uh, hex screws. And then down here, we've got, um, kind of a typical Williams, uh, hinged back door. Uh, and then this is, let's see, which key is the right key for this? Here we go. All right, that comes off. And that really doesn't do much for us. There's a interlock switch here. Um, that's already been pulled out. It's kind of twisted out of the way. Put some light in here and this is a big open space. You got access to this two stereo speakers. Oh, and I guess we need to uh, do that to unlatch the door. So that makes sense. Again, you know, kind of harkening back to the classic Williams era, like your Robotrons and your Jousts. So pop this open. All right. And I'm going to take you off the tripod and we'll take a look at what's going on here. All right. Inside the cabinet, we've got our transformer assembly down there, isolation transformer. Uh, this has a switching power supply installed. I think originally there might have been a 
linear power supply maybe uh, mounted on the door or at least a different switching power supply. This thing is kind of, you know, kind of loose in there. I mean, there's a single screw kind of thrown in to hold it against the wall. Uh, that's got to be, um, I'm guessing some kind of, uh, I don't know, there's a bridge rectifier on it and a couple caps and a couple fuses and lights. Maybe that's some sort of, uh, I don't know, filter, filter cap kind of thing. Um, let's see, this is our William sticker here. I'm um, trying to get it so it doesn't glare up. Uh, NARC, um, serial number, oh my gosh. Um, I don't know which is the right one. Uh, the 171410 is the serial number. And we've got some kind of tag here. Uh, it's just a coin door manufacturing tag. Another one made harness tag. All right, another tag over here, the power um, uh, harness. And yeah, there, there should be two vents here and here. Those are kind of been knocked out, uh, but we've got them in the coin door or the coin bucket. And here is our PCB set, our board set. I guess you don't need the flashlight for this. And I think those are, yep, you can count them. You can pause, hit pause here and count them. I think those are 72. 72 ROMs on this thing, just sort of uh, 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 <laughs> unbelievable. I think in the future, like for, you know, uh, NBA Jam and Mortal Kombat and stuff, even though those were branded Midway, Midway it was really Williams who had bought Midway. Um, so those are really Williams hardware uh, boards. They used larger size ROMs, so it didn't have to get as crazy as this. And then our main board, I think, is right there. And uh, that's got to be an interface board, widget board kind of thing. And uh, I don't know what that is. Maybe that's sound. Maybe that's a sound board. It's got some heat sinks on it. Um, what does that say? Yeah, sound ROM. Those got to be the sound. That's a sound board, main board, interface board, and gigantic ROM board. So uh, let me get uh, mounted on the tripod in the front of the cabinet. And we'll fire this up and play some NARC. Okay, here we go. We're plugged in, ready to go. I'll go ahead and throw the power switch. And I saw this working at the seller's house, so everything should be good to go. Power is on, and it's gonna run through a ROM test, uh, kind of like NBA Jam. Uh, so we have the sort of, um, what do you call it? Uh, like Almost like a rug pattern from like classic uh, Williams. So pass the ROM test. Sorry, my kids, <laughs> my kids interrupted me. But uh, yeah, look at that. And so we'll come over here and take a closer look. All right. And uh, I think this, the only issue this game, I think was maybe not saving the high scores or it was losing the high scores. So we've got a two player setup. Each player has an eight way joystick uh, with four action buttons, rocket bomb, fire, jump, crouch. We have a player one and player two start. So why don't we get set up right here and uh, everything looks really good. I'm gonna come in nice and close and we will get set up for a little gameplay. All right, even with the camera on the right uh, setting, there's a little bit of uh, flickering, uh, but that's, that's not uh, in person. It looks great. This monitor looks fantastic. Uh, maybe there's a tiny little bit of interference. So um, Lex will have to check the, uh, the grounding uh, at some point, but I think we're looking good. So let me coin up the game real quick. And if I remember, these credit switches were kind of tricky. So I'm gonna grab actually a quarter and drop it through. Because um, <laughs> the, the credit switches have these guards on them designed to prevent people from like sticking in a straw and you know stealing a credit. So, oh, the, uh, the coin door lights are out. No big deal there. All right, uh, that didn't work. Try the other one. There we go. Bam. Oh, maybe it did work. It says ready for two players. We'll start a one player game. We'll play a little bit of uh, NARC here. Oh, it's on free play. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> here we go. We started a game. All right. And yeah, uh, super violent. So if you don't want to see that, uh, watch out. Fire, jump, crouch, and rocket. And uh, we don't have unlimited ammo. And technically you can arrest these guys, but whoever does that, getting the money, we're getting the gun, or we're getting the bullets. All 
right. Oof. All right. I I've never spent that much time with Narc. That was sort of a uh, you know when this game was out. I guess I wasn't really spending much time in the arcades. You know, '88 I would have been playing uh, NES sort of mostly, and my parents probably would not have wanted me. Oh, there goes the life. All right, I'm gonna try just yeah, blowing everything up. I'm just spamming the rocket, and I guess I can go in here. Okay. Uh, the screen's a little bit cut off. Probably have to. Lex will have to adjust that a little bit. No big deal. Maybe the screen's a little too high, is what I'm saying. So I think there are like things at the bottom of the screen that I should be able to see that I'm not. I need to do a better job of not getting hit. But I guess the game's designed for that. You know, designed to take credits. Oh, I'm, I guess that those are uh, narcotics that I'm picking up and taking off the street. Okay, I'm not sure what that safe thing was all about. All right, I might be almost dead. Okay, that's the level, right? These bullets are really slow. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear the sound. Everything sounds good. Spread them. I guess in theory you can arrest these guys and not just... Oh, get to that. There we go. All right. Okay, that's the end of level one, I'm guessing. Uh, okay, picked up all those money and uh, bad stuff. Baby powder, that's what it is. Okay, and I guess I have one life left. My 10-year-old uh, son wants to play this. <laughs> and the game's being picked up tomorrow by uh, Beltman. Oh, now they're throwing needles at me. Is that what they're doing? Um, and maybe I'll let him play. I had him go clean his room. So maybe I'll let him play one game because he'll never see this thing again. All right. Yeah, look at those body parts going everywhere. And that's it. So <laughs> that is NARC, classic Williams game. Say no to drugs. <laughs> I think that's going to about do it for this episode. So some really, really cool stuff that we picked up here. Let me fix the house lights real quick. All right, that's a lot better. <laughs> now we can see everything. So uh, yeah, what a cool pickup. Two working games, a gigantic uh, cockpit and a, uh, uh, a rare tabletop game that needs a little bit TLC. I'm sure, uh, sure Cameron will be able to get that working soon enough. This will be an awesome restoration project. You know, that World Series for Cameron that he's been looking for for a long time. This uh, <laughs> Sega Space Tactics uh, cockpit will be an interesting uh, restoration. I'm sure Dillweed will provide updates on his YouTube channel, and he'll probably do a lot more in-depth gameplay on the Spacian game or Galaxy or whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, this NARC is destined for Lex in Missouri, and uh, Beltman's picking it up tomorrow, so I wanted to get this pickup video done and gameplay footage uh, done, because this thing is gone in under 12 hours, so, or maybe a little bit over 12 hours. But uh, yeah, if this is your first time checking out the channel, thanks for watching. I release new videos uh, like this every Sunday, uh, whether sometimes it's pickups, uh, often it's repairing and restoring these games, bringing them back to life. Uh, these games are not going to be mine, though. These four are uh, intended for all friends of mine, but I've got a whole garage full of projects back here, uh, more behind me, more in the basement, and uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun here. So hit that subscribe button if this is your first time so you don't miss any of that. Uh, please hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about these games. Have you ever seen Spacian before? <laughs> Do you remember playing NARC? Uh, did it have an impact on you? <laughs> Give you nightmares or something? Um, yeah, and uh, if you really like what we're doing, you know, click on that button down below that says join to learn more about what it means to become an Overtime Arcade channel member. You get access to a bunch of awesome perks, like uh, monthly members only live stream, which is coming up pretty soon. Uh, you get early access to all new videos. Typically you get to watch them a day before uh, they're released to the public. So you get to watch these things on Saturdays instead of Sundays. 
and you get access to our private members only Discord, which is super active, a lot of fun, a great group of folks talking about what they're working on and playing and that sort of thing. So we're trading deals, all kinds of good stuff going on. So if you're not a member, you are missing out. So click that join button down below. Uh, I've also got a merch shop with t-shirts and other kinds of swag like that. But uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. As always, I'm Charlie. Say no to drugs and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.